Um, hello everyone, my name is Singyu. Today I'm going to talk about transforming language learning with generative AI. We'll dive uh, into the latest AI tutors feature on Duolingo Roleplay. So what is Duolingo? Uh, you might have seen us in this app. Duolingo, 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 um, I really like this jingle, it's stuck in my head for a long time. Uh, you might have used our product to learn a language or heard about us on social media. We're the worldwide leader in language education with over 80 million monthly active users. Our mission is to provide the best education in the world and make it universally available. Now to tell you a bit about myself, I've been a full stack engineer at Duolingo for 2.5 years. This is my first job out of school and I mainly work on the iOS platform. I enjoy meditation, weightlifting, and reading. I'm currently learning Japanese and French uh, and I speak Chinese and English. This is my first time speaking at a conference. Uh, I'm very nervous, but excited and grateful. Thank you. Yeah, very grateful for the opportunity to be here. Um, in March 2023, in partnership with OpenAI to release the latest GPT-4 model, Duolingo introduced a new feature of Roleplay in the highest subscription tier, Duolingo Max. Roleplay aims to provide an in-depth learning experience. It allows learners to practice conversation skills with our world characters in an interactive AI experience. So this is what the Roleplay feature looks like. You start with a scenery such as buying classical music concert ticket in Paris. You're conversing with Lily, the ticket seller, where Lily asks you how many tickets you want and what form of payment you choose. You can respond to her question just as in the real world. I want three tickets paid in cash. Lily will respond to you and ask you more questions. If you get stuck and don't know how to start responding, the feature provides you with a list of helpful phrases to tab on. You can also speak your answer and the speech recognition service will recognize what you said and fill in the input box. At the end of the conversation, you will receive a feedback screen, that ding sound you probably heard of, um, giving you feedback on each response, such as grammar corrections or tone revisions. As you can imagine, behind a beautiful, well-moderated and functional feature like this was a collective effort of many people. This is my team. We work together to build the content, product, design, and engineering of the feature. As a full stack engineer, I will share with you some technical details and challenges we faced while developing Roleplay. We hope our learnings will help you as you work on your AI feature. Let's start with the general architecture of Roleplay. We mainly use two backend microservices to provide data to the client. They're AI features backend and Roleplay backend. AI features backend directly talks to the APIs of OpenAI. It is a generalized layer between any Duolingo AI applications and OpenAI. Roleplay backend is where we host all usages of Roleplay. It stores model parameters and over 100 prompts for the feature. It also requests teaching content and objective from other microservices so we can, we can incorporate other Duolingo content to the AI feature. It sends all this information to AI features backend and receives completions from it. iOS only communicates with Roleplay backend. It sends and receives a payload object called Roleplay state, which is essentially the chat history of the current session. Let's zoom in on how iOS and Roleplay backend talk to each other. We use a stateless protocol this means that when the user sends a message, the iOS client will always send the entire chat history, not just the latest message to the backend. The backend returns the completion, but it doesn't memorize the chat history anywhere. For the purpose of the presentation, I'll use roleplay state and chat history interchangeably. They both mean the project that iOS sends and receives from the backend. Why do we use the stateless architecture? So there are a couple of reasons. One, GPT-4 completion model is naturally stateless. By adopting a stateless protocol, this makes our backend implementation very easy. Second, 
we don't need to store the state of a conversation to the back end because we don't plan to allow users to come back to where they left off. Third, the role play state, the payload object, has a pretty reasonable size because it only store a couple of back and forth. One caveat though is do not put, uh, to, is to be mindful of passing media content in the payload. So for example, if you pass an audio to each message, together with the chat history, the payload size will get too big. This could slow down network requests and fill the backend cache pretty quickly. Don't ask me how we learned about it. <laughs> so within the iOS client, Roleplay uses the Duolingo standard MVVM architecture, an internal iOS architectural guideline. We use data source and repository to send network requests to the backend. The view models is in charge of most of the business logic. The view controller connects the VM and the view, making sure that the view gets notified as the view state in the VM changes. So now that you understand the general architecture behind role play feature, I want to share with you a couple of challenges we encountered while developing this feature. So the first one is building a chat interface. We know you're probably not impressed. Uh, building a chat inter interface is too common of a problem. There's so many tutorials online and third party platforms to help you build a messaging system in your app. However, I promise you it wasn't easy in our case. We needed to build something that allows us to add custom animation and message insertion and replacement. We also needed to figure out how to work with the stateless API and translate the stateless object we receive from the backend to UI updates. We do a lot of message processing work on the client. Let's first look at the chat interface UI. The chat messages are hosted in a UI collection view. We mainly have four types of cells, the narration cell at the beginning of the chat, character messages cell, user message cell, and loading cell. As you can see in this GIF animation, when a new message gets appended to the chat, we use the fade in and slide up animation. This was actually not trivial to accomplish in a UI collection view. We implement a subclass of UI collection view flow layout, wrote a custom UI collection view layout attributes, and set the animation of each cell in initial layout attributes for appearing item. There's some tutorials online, and this is a really cool thing to do. So you just saw how, how the UI collection view animates its insertion and deletion updates. But where does it obtain these updates from? So if you recall, the backend sends the role play state to the client. How does the client translate the new role play state it receives to UI collection view updates? Because role play state, again, is the entire chat history, but UI updates are specific to each messages. So let's walk through this problem in your role play session. So suppose you are now in the middle of a chat. There are so far three conversation cells in the UI collection view. We're waiting for the user to respond to the last message. Do you want to pay in cash or card? So Roleplay VM is the brain of the Roleplay feature that obtains the latest state from the backend and informs all UI changes. It keeps a copy of the latest Roleplay state it received from the backend. Right now, Roleplay state just has three messages and Roleplay state are, and the UI collection view are in sync. Now suppose the user respond with a message, I want to pay by cash. This triggers a series of events. First, we append a loading cell to the UI collection view to tell user we're loading, we're fetching the next message. Second, the Roleplay VM using its repository sends the user's message and the current Roleplay state to the backend. The backend then sends back the updated Roleplay state so now the role play state in the VM has two new messages, the latest user message and the character's message. Then the role play, state, role play message processor of the brain, role play VM, comes in. Look at the messages in the UI and the messages in the role play state. It uses an algorithm to compute what updates are needed to sync the UI with the role play state. In this case, it decides 
that the UI needs to delete the loading message and append a new character's message. The UI collection view is informed and perform the two updates. So this is basically what happens behind the scenes when user sends a message. So as you can see, we have a really intricate and complex system to power this chat interface. A major takeaway for us when implementing this on iOS was the importance of separation of concerns. Believe it or not, we have 20, more than 25,000 lines of code just for role play. It is a big, big application. and We need to maintain a good architecture to stay organized. Since we use the stateless API, the client is not only in charge of displaying the UI, but also responsible for translating role play state to UI states. Therefore, we not only have a single view model, but also a state manager and a message processor to handle state changes in message processing. This prevents the VM from getting bloated. So in summary, the client will be in charge of view, view updates, as well as complex business logic and networking calls. This really makes separation concerns and to, uh, become very important. Uh, this can help, the, as you introduce new code, this can, this can help you iterate faster and reuse components in a large system like this. Now that we've seen some iOS specific challenges, we'll dive into some problems we encountered while working with GPT. Latency optimization on helpful phrases. So some context, what are helpful phrases? It is a feature in Roleplay where we provide a list of phrases that the user can potentially use when composing their response. So in this animation, the character says they have bouillabaisse and gratin dauphinois, the two French dishes, and asks the learner what they want to eat. The helpful phrases provided to the learner were, I want to eat, the bouillabaisse, please, and the. So these phrases are generated by GPT. We feed the conversation history, especially the last character's message, and some words users have learned in other Duolingo lessons when generating these options. We display them as soon as the user taps on the input bar. When we first implemented this feature, we generated the helpful phrases immediately after we generate the last character response. We perform both requests consecutively when displaying the loading cell. As you can imagine, fitting two synchronized requests together make the loading time exceptionally long. It feels like Lily is taking forever to respond. So to decrease the loading time of the character message, we use some common latency optimization strategies. First is using the right GPT model. Since the latest model GPT-4 is slower then we tried GPT 3.5, which was faster but less accurate. So once we found that 3.5 didn't serve our purposes in terms of accuracy, we fine-tuned the GPT 3.5 models with 100 to 200 examples. Second method was decreasing the number of output tokens. This is one of the biggest contributing factor to latency for all generative AI applications. So we tried to do a round of prompt cleansing uh, meaning we decrease the amount of tokens in the completion until it's, uh, to its bare minimum. Last is utilizing cached input. This means front loading the repeated part of the prompt and put the variable part to the end. So for example, when we put conversation history, which is different for each usage of the prompt to the end of the prompt, this helps us utilize input caching that's inherently inherently available in GPT's API requests. So the classical latency solutions are great, but is there anything we can do on the iOS side? So the answer is actually yes. We asked ourselves what can be done in parallel while generating the list of helpful phrases. Can we give as much time to the generation as possible? My team came up with a creative solution the backend first send the character response to the client without generating helpful phrases. So now the loading time has already ended at this point. So once the character response reaches the client, the client kicks off a separate network, 
network call to request helpful phrases from the back end. We'll keep the task running while the text to speech of the character plays and even while the user is thinking about the response. In the ideal case, the fetch request, pretty, the fetch request finishes pretty quickly and the backend returns the list of phrases. I want to eat, the bouillabaisse, and so on. Now user clicks on the input bar and see the generated phrases. However, if the request doesn't finish on time, before the user taps on the input bar, we cancel the request right before surface, surfacing the input bar and display a list of default phrases. I want, I have, I can. And this is shared across all helpful phrases applications. So this method gives us at least two to three seconds of additional time to generate helpful phrases. Since the character will speak for one to two seconds and the user, user usually thinks for a couple of seconds before tapping on the input bar. We believe that this make loading message, the, the loading time really short, which gives users a smoother UI experience. I realize I'm a bit short on time, so I'll skim through the code part because it's not very involved. But essentially, uh, we do all of these in the repository, and uh, so we fetch and cancel the request, and uh, if it gets canceled, then we return a nil object, and the VM will take care of um, populating the default phrases. So as you probably know, latency is a very common problem while developing a generative AI application. So here are some learnings we'd like to share with you. First is exploring common latency optimization strategies. There are lots of tutorials online, and I highly recommend you to check it out. However, don't, don't be limited to the classical solutions. Really think from the UX perspective what can be done in parallel to the uh, to the generation time. Can you buy yourself some time to kick off an asynchronous generation? And also remember the alternative that you can cap the latency of a request if it's taking too long and provide default options to the generation. So overall, developing role play was a difficult task. We couldn't have done it without cross collaboration across numerous functions. So here's a summary of our top takeaways while working on the generative AI feature. First, this is probably intuitive, but developing a production scale iOS AI application is not as simple as putting an iOS wrapper around ChatGPT. Roleplay offers so much more than just practicing French with ChatGPT. So if you have a backend that talks to OpenAI, you'll need backend expertise to handle OpenAI outages, which happens more frequently than we want, uh, reduce latency, update your application to the latest models. Second, prompt engineering skills are crucial to providing targeted, well-moderate, and meaningful content to the users. We try to put the most important instruction to the end of the prompt and remove unnecessary words to make sure GPT will follow the instructions correctly. We keep monitoring questionable and problematic content that role play generates and make sure we modify the prompt to prevent further occurrences of the same issue. We also try to tie roleplay feature to existing content of Duolingo. We feed the other, other Duolingo content to a few prompts to make sure the user gets to practice what they learn in Duolingo, in other Duolingo lessons. Connecting is existing content with your new AI feature can make it feel like a more coherent experience overall. Last, anticipate a fast iterative process. OpenAI frequently releases new GPT models. It's helpful to update your application to the latest model in order to reduce cost and improve the quality of completions. Also anticipate fast product iterations. We're all trying to figure out how AI applications can work the best. So anticipate the changes, really fast product changes to how you structure the UI and UX of your application. And as an engineer, this means being ready to adapt by having clear and flexible design patterns in your code. Overall, developing any GPT application is difficult, but the reward is high. For years, Duolingo could only teach static materials to users, and users found it difficult to apply what they learned on the app to the real world. 
GBT unlocked a new possibility, and we can now provide adaptable, real-world conversation in a scalable and affordable fashion. We're still improving upon the role play feature and unlocking new applications of generative AI. We're very excited to explore and share this journey with you all. Thank you.